not a fan But you know the way you rock me slowly I always feel horny Can I hit you on my balcony? Nightly Or if it's cool daily I've never been crazy like this But girl you will feel this I do you like it Serious about this feeling, right deep inside of me. Girl, I'm ready to settle down. Yeah, be the man of your life. 
This is love, yes I know, oh so true You and me till the end This is love, yes I know Thank you 
Because I'm not afraid anymore Welcome, welcome, welcome to Club Shadinia, episode, let me loop the music, let me make sure everything is fine, all systems are go, let me turn off Photoshop, we don't need you to eat the memory, uh, WhatsApp can stay, I don't know, Discord is off, let me turn off this. Turn this off, quick time, we don't need you, bye. Let me empty the trash. Boom. Ciao. Oh shit. I'm not gonna do this now. <laughs> it's 
<laughs> That's not sort of good idea. <laughs> While you're live streaming and brah, your whole system just dies. Welcome to Club Shadow episode 211. Uh, this show is brought to you by Shadow Wear, the gods of good fortune. I hope everybody is in a good spirit. I hope everybody had a great beginning of the week. I don't listen. I don't even know when the holiday starts. This this life, like I don't know. All I know is Wednesday. I'm working. If, I mean, where, where, Wednesday, I'm I'm club shadowing. And Sunday, I'm club shadowing. The rest of the time, I'm just, yeah, editing videos, designing, creating NFTs, uh, making music, recording songs. Uh, yeah. So, uh, yeah, can't complain. Uh, I want to thank all the new subscribers. We are now 190,000 subscribers on this channel. Uh, most of them watching music videos, but a few of them coming to this show. Uh, so hi to Naomi, ABN, Nirma, Haitian Trader, hi, Romero, etc., 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 etc. Welcome to the channel. I want to bless, uh, send my blessings, and th say thanks to the blessings to. La Baronne, la seule et unique, Emmanuel Etienne, our stream royalty for the month of June. And all the sponsors, uh, your names are here, Lynn Maro, Joel Amen, etc, etc. If you want to be the stream royalty, it is, it's easy. You want to be the stream royalty for the rest of the month? $10. Boom. And you become the stream royalty and you replace Emmanuel Etienne and you, who would have a very short-lived uh, uh, queendom. But hey, listen, until then, we roll it. Uh, oh my God, my ears are... My, my ears don't... I have to get some new headphones. Uh, yeah. I have to get me some new headphones. That's it, whatever. Something a little more professional. Maybe not in plastic, something that would be all black. I've seen a few things that I've been uh, thinking about. All right. Let me say hi to the people. Oh, there's a few comments that were there earlier that left already. Uh, respect ALC was goody la milliardaire i hope you good en face de guérison i like it this is how we do it vraiment rétablis toi bien prends ton temps il faut prendre son temps dj busy brown you have to come to the show and have a conversation about djing in germany etc etc i'd love to have a conversation with you on the show uh elise boys how are you i hope you're doing good uh she's back miss trish what's a goodie so you're done being too busy for us vraiment ça c'est ça à faire je ne sais quoi moi je la vois moi je suis ses posts I see you on the gram I was there I put likes to show her that yeah I see you she was there like avec son décolleté plongeant today I was like hmm, let me like this then I was oh shit my wife is looking at me that's my cousin <laughs> oh my goodness Juju Zhao how are you? How is your heart uh, healing process in your big house? We're still waiting for that content. I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm not, I'm, I'm talking professionally, not as a fan. I mean, I mean, see what I mean, you understand. 
Kesha, you can sit hi Tatiana. You can say on this YouTube streets, I am. Do you realize that your music was part of some people's life? I kind of do. What if you realize the impact you had? I do. <laughs> a little bit. But thank you so much for your... Uh, thank you so much for your your comment. I appreciate it. And actually, I'm uh, I'm having a, a, my first show of the year. Uh, here's going to be here in Portugal and Lisbon Saturday. And it's going to be an old school party. And I'm only going to sing songs that are like 15 years old and and more. So all the, you know, Fiona, One Love, Question My Heart, I Like It, 88 BPM, all these songs, Raquel, etc., etc. So I'm, I'm actually about to, tomorrow probably, I'm going to create the show because I have to do like a, a 30 minute show for the people. I hope they will like it. We'll see. What's goody DJ Montero? Oh, Joel Amen. How are you, my cousin? I hope you're doing good. Moi, moi j'ai rien dit. Tu veux que j'aille sur ton profil? Je vais rien dire. Malcolm Beats. Então, essas colunas. Como que tá o som? Like, Malcolm Beats like goes to the store to buy some 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 speakers for his mu home studio but he buys speakers for for a, a whole nightclub i don't know why but it's you who say mj what's good brother i hope you're doing good how are the kids? Are you already uh, preparing number three? Just wanting to know. I'm asking for, <laughs> asking for a friend. <laughs> if you know what I love about having kids, like when you have one kid, everybody's asking you, when are you making the second one? <laughs> when you have two, everybody's like, yeah, hey, what is it? That? Do they realize how much it costs? <laughs> Not only in in time in energy, in worries, but also in money. <laughs> oh, we are like, the one who's 19 have to pay his ticket to come here for the holidays. The one who's, who's, who's almost five, yeah, this party celebration for her birthday on the 30th. Plus, school is that much. This is that much. And like, everybody's just like, chilling thinking that your money grows on trees and then and then people come and say yo why are you when are you having a second one i said i already have two nah with your wife like you should have, said when i when i'm a when i'm a multi-millionaire we can talk about that before that yo phew, take take space takes takes all your energy you guys don't realize and most of the time these people don't even have kids or maybe they have one and you're like yeah but what about you like well you want me to have three you don't even have like more than one go ahead i'm waiting i'm I, i'm right behind you <laughs> uh, what are you talking about I'm a rapper. Listen, you would have loved dating. I mean, well, depends when. <laughs> depends when. Between 2000 and, I mean, it depends. Like, yeah, it depends. If I, if it was for something serious, ah, yeah, you would have loved it. Well, if it's not something serious, then it's up to you to. Then I'm like, yo, you're on your own. But, but, you also have to understand, like, something that I realize is that most, most people, when they date people like me, 
they always complain. You know why they always complain? Because in the beginning, they're happy to find somebody who's only interested in his work. Uh, way more than clubbing, girls, all these things. Like I'm obsessed with my work, my money, my internet, my shows, my music, my, my the universe, the things I'm bringing, my ambitions, etc. But after six months, they all complain. Yeah, all you care about is your work, your shows, your crypto, your this, your that. You only know how to talk business, blah, 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 blah. And yeah, that's, yeah, that's, yeah, that's me, exactly. So, you know, you guys, like, you don't know what you want. Like, because when you got it, you complain about it. And then you go back to the fuckers. And when you are with the fuckers, then you come back crying to me about the fuckers. And I'm like, well, good luck. That's the problem. That is the problem. But rappers are cool. You know, I guess I'm a cool rapper. You know, just saying. Et c'est faux. Les gens comme moi résistent. Parce qu'on sait où ne pas aller. On sait très bien que si on va là, c'est dangereux. Donc, on ne se cherche même pas là-bas. On va directement dans l'amitié. Tu vois? Le problème, c'est que si tu te mets avec des faibles qui vont. Oui, ils vont. La chair, la chair est faible. Faut, 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 you know? Yeah, là, they love it. Anyway, I'm here to talk about music today. Yeah, so um, I'm gonna have a so I have a show Saturday for anybody who's around uh, Lisbon. Um, yeah, come through. He's gonna be in Margin Sul. So Margin Sul is the south side of Lisbon, on the other side of the two bridges. Uh, he's gonna be in Coroyos in a club that used to be called. R.E.S. Dreams that I already performed there a few years ago, probably 10 years ago, I don't know, maybe more, maybe less. And um, it's now called Velio Texas. That's the name, Velio Texas. And uh, yeah, it's going to be an old school party. So really like only the whole night is going to be old school Kizomba songs, music from the 90s, 2000s, max so i believe the population is probably going to be uh a little more mature i don't know i have, I have no clue i know that that i think that club takes like 800 people i'm not sure so we'll see saturday i'll i'll make sure to to have somebody come and film the show uh i think malcolm is coming with me to the show so that's gonna be cool it's been a, it's been forever that i haven't been in a club with malcolm <laughs> just like probably last time we met each other at docks i don't know five or six or seven years ago so uh yeah i think it's gonna be cool what up eve um so yeah, I think that's I think that's all I have to say about today. Like, I mean, I have this subject that I, nah, I don't. Listen, I'm gonna stay on. I'm gonna stay on the subject because I start talking about gossip and stuff. I'm gonna I'm gonna lose my time. And I, actually, I need to have more know more about the subject before I dive in. So I'm gonna go straight to. I mean, and of course, in the chat, if you have questions thing you want to talk about as take the show where it's not supposed to go you know what you have to do you just ask a question and boom we roll in uh, so uh, I want to talk to you about uh, the different aspects of let me turn off this, the music a little bit turn down a bit yeah I want to talk about why I believe that there's been a real 
revolution in the music industry uh, the last 15 years, I believe. I mean, and it's interesting because to a lot of people, it feels like, to a lot of people, it feels like it was just like, paf. And then the whole music industry just turned itself up, upside down. But I really believe that the music industry started changing as the internet started evolving. So for those of you who are, who are more than 35 and remember the LimeWire day, the Napster days, uh, the Kaza days, music was changing already at that time. And I think the, to me, what is the most profound change about the music industry is the fact that artists don't need executive producers anymore. And it is a good thing. And at the same time, it is a bad thing. So before telling you why it's a bad thing, I'm going to tell you why I believe that it's a... This song again? I'm going to tell you why I believe that it's a great thing. When I started making music, uh, when I did my first show ever in front of a crowd in Brussels, in a club in Belgium in 1992, um, the, the dream, the only way we, we believed to be able to have our music out to the world was to sign to a record company. So we had to find a record company like uh, Sony, BMG, Warner, EMI, etc., etc., or maybe an independent label. And that was the only way at that time to be able to. To have your your music come out as a CD in a store, we had no idea how it worked. We had no idea about distribution, publishing, all that stuff. All we knew was that, yeah, when you sign to a record label, there it is. And when I was uh, probably ninety. Three ninety four. After doing a lot of shows, a lot of of, of, of shows in in the hip hop scene in in, in in Paris. Every day I was at Universal. Every day I was at Universal. Just I remember it was not far from uh, Jardin des Tuileries. No way. No Jardin du Luxembourg. I think it was yeah. It was the Metro Luxembourg. And I would go there all the time because I, there was an A&R, he liked me. So he would let me come, I would make him listen to some beats, I would make him listen to some demos. But he was like, yeah, you know, in France, it's in English. Uh, it was always like telling me, you know, being very uh, kind to me, but always telling me that, yeah, I mean, you're not American. You should not sing in English. I was like, uh, I only listen to music in English, so, and yeah, but you know, you speak French. I was like, no, I speak French, English, Spanish. At that time, I spoke those, and Lingala. So I spoke those four already at that time. So I don't see why I should choose. Yeah, but you know, da, 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 quotas, what, like, I didn't understand. So it was very frustrating to me, but it was the way at that time. And all we dreamed of was signing all of us i think it was the only way anyway because i mean we had no clue how much it cost but it cost a fortune to be able to 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 release music to the world and so fast forward 
six years after uh, when I signed to to one uh, sub label of Sony Music uh, in 1998 all of a sudden yeah I had the whole the whole thing signed to Sony Publishing at the same time so I was in Sony Publishing and Recordings and all of a sudden I had the big team I had like you know PR team, etc., magazine interviews, all that stuff. Uh, actually, my mom sent me a bunch of them. I have to scan them. Uh, it, it, it was amazing to read my old interviews from 25 years ago. And uh, I'm telling you, it's them, it's not me. So, and p put those likes. Everybody put that like good. I like this. Now imagine that uh, when I mean uh, when I mean Sony, and my first album comes out, and I have like the stores with big posters. I like it. So in France we have this store called the uh, Fnac, which is like the Virgin Mega Store or, or Tower Records. In, in the US uh, or uh, yeah, Portugal also have FNAC and I, in the FNAC I remember the day of the release of my album there was big posters big huge posters like but like big in all the Caribbean world music section they put them like in the, the FNAC Chatelet and it, it, I was walking there I was like oh my god what's going on and then I remember going in the in the <laughs> I remember when I I went to to the club the first time and DJ Alan uh he was in Nanterre and he played my song Telephone and everybody was dancing. You know, it's kind of surreal this idea that oh my god it's happening. But everything was guided by uh the, the execs on on the record label i had no hands on anything else than the, the creation of of the music and the concept of my own music everything else they decide everything they put me in the different places they told me yeah you're gonna go, go sing here for free you're gonna do this you're gonna do that etc and at a point uh so it was kind of interesting you know it was kind of interesting to me to design my first album, to design my album. And because I was coming from the graphic school after the economic school, I designed everything on Quark Express, the, all the pages of the album, like got like, you could turn it. I don't, I don't know, like, well, let me see if I have the album here. Let me find those things when I need them. Well, forget it. So, then the album came out and went gold. So in France, gold was 100,000 copies. And uh, I became the number one selling, uh, was good, bon shows number one selling artist while i'm talking you can put what time it is uh and the flag of the country where you're listening from so i became the number one selling artist of world french world music caribbean music uh zouk and african music in the french territory after cassav nobody did those numbers and uh, yeah, it was crazy. And I didn't really realize the, the pioneer uh, status that I was having. I didn't think about all that. All I knew was that I wanted my music to be heard, et cetera, et cetera. So at a point, uh, 
why why was it good at that time to have a record label and people taking care of you etc was that as an artist all you had to focus was your art that's it and today in uh, imagine imagine doing a tv show back in the 80s back in the 90s back in the early 2000s even if it's a show when it's just you talking there's no guest at that time it was it was just you your notes somebody would install you a microphone or put a microphone in front of you and you would have somebody behind the camera there maybe somebody behind another camera there maybe another mobile camera somewhere somebody taking care of the sound somebody taking care of the lights you would have one post for each people somebody making sure that the image goes from uh let me show how do i do this that the image goes from uh looking like this to looking like this taking care of everything picture setting gamma camera options etc etc making sure that the whole the whole thing is looking great and then you would have rehearsal and those cameras every camera each camera would cost at that time each camera would cost at that time thousands and thousands of 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 euros and very interestingly when Today, when you look at this show, it's a Wyman operation. Decor, lighten, lightning, the whole three lights, everything in the back, da 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 da, camera, the whole setting, and everything is done with YouTube. You see what I mean? So, In music is the same thing today. Today, we can do everything by ourselves. You can have a microphone like this that costs $200. And with a microphone like this, you can record. It's, it, it's, it's, this, it's, the, it's a digital version of the microphone that Michael Jackson used to record Thriller. So today, you can record your music by your own and that's the real revolution and he brought a lot of amazing amazing uh, things for artists and creators and it's interesting because as i'm talking to you and you know i never prepare my show so i'm just freestyling but as i'm talking to you i'm realizing that it's not just music it's music it's image uh all of us are different businesses and our different crowds that, that follow us. It's all through our phones or our setups and all of us are, we all are independent businesses, all of us. And it's very interesting. And the real, real, real revolution, if you think about it, is that creators artists are they don't need a label they don't need nobody to do all these things that my label did for me at that time you can create a huge brand just using instagram you can create a brand and have 10,000 100,000, 1 million followers on Instagram. And once you have all these people, a, a new, inside of that 1 million people, you, f you have like 50 to, to 70,000 loyal diehard fans. If you wanna, you wanna sell the music, 
you take them to Spotify or Apple Music or Tidal or where, wherever your music is, and they will go there and they will push your music. You you want to sell them a T-shirt or, or a hat, you send them to a website that you can do uh, just like mine. It's automate, automated and they will go and buy your your product. You want to, you want, you have, you think that your million followers would love to, to know what kind of hotel you like. Hotels will pay you to come to their hotel for free, stay there, stay there for two, three nights a week. And in exchange of doing some photos and influencing your followers to go to that hotel. They will pay you to wear whatever dress. They will pay you X, Y, Z. You, you, if you in the, 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 the adult business, you have websites like, like OnlyFans where you can have people pay a subscription so that they can see your photos or your videos. And all this, you can do it by yourself. So that, that, the, this this revolution that happened in the in the content industry, the content creation, the content, uh, so music for me. But if you if we talk about music, if if you see, I'm not only doing music anymore now. I have a show. We are at episode 200, 211. Uh, plus, I have songs, thousands of songs online. Plus, I have NFTs like. And all this by myself. No team, no PR, no this, no that. And my whole, all my promo using all my networks, everything that I've built for the last 20 years, my presence online is used to promote everything that I create. And that's the good thing. That's an um, amazingly the fact that you don't need nobody and nobody is preventing you from trying. Because back when I signed to Sony, well, if they didn't sign you, you were on the other side. On the other side with the rest of those who were not signed and who had almost zero chance of making it you had some indie labels you have some people who independently put out music but it costs a lot of money at that time because you want to sell 10,000 cds you had to spend 20,000 euros just of printing which means having the cd a master cd sent to the factory to, to create 10,000 copies of your of your CD plus 10,000 booklets uh, in paper. So, keep, I was looking for my album. So this is an album of Sumia that I produced. So you had like, you had to create 10,000 copies of this. Plus you had to create Plus you had to create uh, 10,000 copies of the, the plastic. You had to have to buy the plastic. Inside you had to create the paper that was on that side. Then it was the same one here. And then the booklet that was in there. And me, oh, listen, I didn't care. Like I would do you some crazy, some crazy stuff. And I designed all of this by myself. On, uh, on Quark Express. I think this one was done in Photoshop probably, but so we had like, and, and we were very ambitious in our, the art because we thought that not only we are giving to, to our customers something that we want them, to, an object that we want them to cherish, but we were also, uh, for ourselves we didn't we we wanted to do quality and all this cost money at that time today because nobody because everything is immaterial 
uh, back in the days when you were you were doing photos those photos had to go in a print magazine today those photos go on instagram they go on facebook those videos go to youtube uh, that music go to spotify it's streamed nobody needs to to hold anything anymore nobody owns anything anymore and as a creator it's easier but two things I believe and everybody who's a creator here if you agree with me uh, put some rainbows in the chat I believe that creators are left alone in the dark today because back in the days it was like 10 of us you had like 10 guys 10 girls and maybe less i uh, remember when I, I was really active active performing every weekend so you had me had nichols ali angel sly uh fasa Fas. um who else you had a uh, Marvin a little later. You had a yeah. You had a few artists, of course, and like, but in every genre, I would say that you had like ten people at the top, and you had a lot of clubs. You had like I don't know twenty clubs around in in Paris and outside Paris, and then you had another. I don't know 100 clubs all around france plus another 10 in belgium 10 in switzerland 10 in uh, luxembourg uh, uh 30 in portugal and just with that you had a whole market and for 10 people so the whole year you were just going from city to city and performing and performing and performing but today since anybody can make music, anybody can do a YouTube show, anybody can take a camera and start talking and be live on Twitch, on YouTube, and have their 100 people watching, 1,000 people, 10,000, a million people. And because when, when people see that somebody's making it, everybody is saying, I can make it too. So it created a completely saturated market where because everybody can make it, everybody's trying to make it. And everybody is kind of letting down the, the other crafts that were an integral part of the content creation, the music, which were the management, the A&R, the the road manager, the people who, who who come with you to the show, the all the people around, they all disappear because even them, like back then a makeup artist was somebody who was taking care of you, like before your interviews, before your photo shoots, where you were doing your, 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 your music videos and they were there like, and all these were people in the shadows but now even those people, they realize, wait a minute, if I put my great makeup on Instagram or on TikTok and I show how I can transform myself, I'm a star as well. I got followers and everybody got obsessed with followers, followers and followers and followers, engagement, likes, comments, and, and you could, and, and I'm not complaining because, well, why would you be in the shadows? But the thing is, we got sold the world, maybe from MySpace, but really with Facebook, it started. They sold us a world where everybody's famous, everybody's a micro star and can become a huge star. Everybody can have their reality show in their stories uh, or their vlogs, etc., etc. And as somebody who's who has been championing independence 
self-expression. I cannot complain about it, but I can see how hmm, I didn't think back then the effect it would have on our business. Because when it was just 10 of us, well, you know, we felt alone and we were like, yeah, it should be more of us. But now that it's more of us, we realize that to exist is harder because not only it's more of us, but it's less clubs because all the crises that have been going on, 2008, uh, 2020, all, the, all these crises, crises that have been going on, there's, in Paris, there's like five clubs now where you can perform. So the whole market change and the way to market, the way to create, it's so easy to create, but creators are left in the dark. They're left on their own. Nobody's explaining to them. And, and everybody is trying to get the comments. Everybody's trying to get the likes. Everybody is trying to, to exist in this world. And especially those who, and it's, it's, I can't say that because everybody has the right to exist. But some, but sometimes it feels like you want to tell people like, should you really do this? But you can't because at the same time, yeah, everybody has the right to say whatever. Everybody, everybody has the right to try to do a song. Even if it sounds horrible, you have the right to do it. But at the same time, if the algorithm sees one song of Keisha plus 100 songs of people who are trying and even if they're bad, the algorithm might not show to the 100 people Keisha. You might show Keisha to 10 people and to 90 people all the rest of the songs from the people who have the right to try and even if what they're doing is they will not succeed but everybody gets a shot and everybody's and everybody and it costs nothing so because all the barriers to entry fell it, it created some real interesting new problems we are all left asking ourselves what are we supposed to do as creators i want to be in the in the adult industry i'm i'm, I'm going to do an an only fans i'm going to do a a, a a shutter bait i'm going to do a live jasmine i'm going to do a this or that i'm going to open my, a, 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 an account on x videos or, or, or whatever and when i arrive there with my content i believe that my content is great i'm going to use instagram to have all these followers and then i'm going to funnel them to the places where they pay something but when you arrive there you have 1000 girls that looks like you guys trans this that like and it's saturated so and 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 because of the saturation saturation a lot of people are just adding, abusing, create, being more and more egregious because they believe that it's the only way to exist is to do more. And for everything you do, you're a musician, there's 100,000 musicians. You know how many songs come out every day on Spotify? 60,000 every day. So every 10 days, that's 600,000 songs coming out. Yeah, 600,000. So it's impossible to listen to everything. So it means that a lot of these six, 60,000 songs that came out today, a lot of them will do one or two or three plays and that's it. These people will never make money, but they're here, they're trying. It's possible, it's easy. And there's, there are tools to just arrive and it's easy. But there's nobody that to tell you it's not for you. There's nobody to tell you do it more like this. There's nobody to tell you that song is. Eh. And when I was, when I had my label, uh, I mean, I still have my label, but when I was really actively looking for, for talent to talent to work on, talent to 
to help people to to give a ramp of you know people of um people to to give them like the la rampe de lancement de de to jumpstart their career like I did with Tia, Sumia, ABG, Elisio, uh, Mika Mendes, uh, uh, Isa, Taina, uh, Ledes, and many more. At that time, people would listen to you. And people would understand the, the passions. People would understand when you would tell them, it's going to take us two years. From now on, like from now on, when you sign to Sushi Raw, It's 96. No, 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 sorry. It's 2005, for example. This album will come out in 2007. So until then, we're going to train your stage presence. We're going to train um, your... We're going to change your look. Uh, we're going to create three or four hits that I know they're going to work. And as so soon as we have those four hits, we're gonna work on your universe. We're gonna, you're gonna, we're gonna find who you are. You're gonna tell me who you want to be, what you are. We're gonna have the conversation. Take the time. I'm gonna create something for you. I'm gonna create your universe, and from that universe, we're gonna have the graphical universe. We're gonna have the musical universe. We're gonna have also who you are, the lyrics. So we're gonna work on all this. It's gonna take us a one and a half good years. And we're gonna slowly create something and we're gonna create a buzz. We're gonna take the time to go on YouTube, show you, present you to the people, uh, film your, 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 your studio session so people are, are starting to be excited and create something slowly. And then the first album will come out and people will love it, it's gonna work. But then it's going to be the beginning of something because then it's going to be the second, then the third, and maybe by the fourth album in around eight years from now, you will have a career. But most of the people today, they want to post today and have 10,000 followers. They post videos on YouTube and because they're only interested in the numbers, they're going to buy the numbers. They're going to go, they're going to buy views and and pretend because and then they, because they want to they want to go and perform and they want to impress the, the 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 people with the numbers so that they get they get hired to do shows because they want to look all these people are watching my videos hire me okay i'll pay you that much but first of all whenever you see one artist you like you're going to find a thousand artists that sound exactly the same same flow same song same everything it's the same in in every genre kizomba zook r&b rap etc etc why because most artists are left in the dark they don't know what to do so they do the same as everybody else and the the apps of today the apps of today like um like tiktok are telling you Yeah, do the same as everybody and I'll put you in front. So somebody do a choreography and everybody's using that sound and create the same choreography. And this makes your sound go up. But if you think about it, it creates a whole society of uniform people who are all doing the same thing. And personally, As somebody who, you know, I fight from a young age because I was born the son of a very famous and very respected politician in my country. My whole, my whole, my whole, uh, my whole path as a, as a, as an adult was more or less, you know. Music was not now. It was like, okay, you go this way, you go study there. When you come back, 
you can be a lawyer, you can be a this, uh, that, uh, you can start doing business or you can go to politics. Like, and shh, like we had like, even if our parents were first, first, like, you know, people are giving a lot of slacks to, to, to African politicians. But when you think about it, they were figuring it out as well because for them it was the first time that they, they all came from nothing they all had no money they might maybe some of them were in the army some of them were here there like by 30 they were all millionaires and they had no idea what to do with all the money so of course they did shit and but for us second generation my first fight was I don't want to be in politics. I don't want to be part of this whole thing because I want to express myself differently. I want to sing. And I had to fight to be able to sing. And not only I had to fight to be able to sing, once I came to Paris, I had to fight to stay unique. I had to fight to stay unique. I remember when we did uh the first album of sumia still in love and my album it's a love my third album and the album of elisio uh original di cabo verde and then the abg album c'est nous même we were the first artists in the and not the first but inside of the label where we were nobody cared about the quality of the photos Nobody cared about the quality of the videos. Everybody was just caring about going and doing shows. We were the first to do CD covers with photos from fashion photographers. So I met a fashion photographer and I told him, hey, I want to work with you on my album covers. Oh, I cost a lot of money. I'll pay you. And I started paying a thousand euros per cover when most people, they would pay a hundred at that time. And because I was making all the instrumentals of the albums, so I was not paying the beats. I used that money in the visuals because, because I come from the American school of making music. I, 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 yeah, I, I grew up looking at the, the Puff Daddies, the Dr. Dre's, all these people, how they did music and how the presentation was important. And when we did the first album of Sumia, the, my, my album, etc. In the beginning, everybody was like, wow, this is beautiful, but it cost money. That's what everybody said in the label. But once we sold a ton of them, all these people who didn't care about the, the the photographs, the first thing they did, they find the name of who did our photos and they start calling him, Alain Herman. Yo, yo, we all want to come. So he had a lot of businesses all of a sudden, which was good for him, but at the same time pissed me off. And when I, when I told him about it, I told him, Brother, I, I, I have nothing against the fact that you are making your money. That's an objective for me. But I have a problem with the fact that by you working with all our colleagues and competitions, we all look the same. We all look from the, pers the, per the perfection of your eye, of your camera. And we had something unique when we start working with you. Our covers were on a certain level on compared to everybody else. And because all these people have no imagination, instead of saying, wow, they're doing great work with this guy, let's find another guy and show them that we can all do great work and level up the whole industry. Nah. All these people with no imagination, they just went to the same as us. And that's how they fuck the business because then some of them don't pay, some of them do this, or, and, or everybody look the same. And all of a sudden we are not unique anymore. And 
this created for me um this was the beginning for me of damn it's too easy i listen i fight so much in my life for it to be easy and i end up in in a, in a certain contradiction because when it's too easy it also it, it it is amazing that it's easy because somebody like trisha somebody like julie somebody like joel somebody like elise all of us can create something la milliardaire mj all of us are able to create our little universe with our little amount of people and grow them but at the same time all the fuckers do all the useless people that shouldn't be here they can come too and make a lot of noise it's the same thing i say about social media twitter it's amazing to be able to say what you have to say but at the same time all the idiots can talk as well but who am i to say who has the right to talk that's the contradiction if i'm for freedom everybody should be able to talk but damn they should shut the fuck up and it's horrible for me and so i've been fighting my whole life to not only be independent but also be unique and i think i more or less find a way to like if people listen to my discography it is true that i'm kind of unique for what i do the fact that if you you know if you take one day at a time to to go to my youtube channel and go from video one uh when youtube just started and see my first 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 vlogs my first all my youtube session all my music videos all my the, everything that is on my youtube channel there's 5000 videos on this channel and then you go back to my first album up to the 10th album and you also check everything that i did i can say that i'm unique and i can say that i achieved a lot of things number one zook artist number one zook and b artist number one kizomba artist number one coupe de calais song etc i have songs that i've been playing for 20 years now so i understand that i made it and i'm smart enough to know how to navigate the the revolution of the the music business and i would i should even say the content business but i see a lot of people that are lost i see a lot of people that yeah they put out content and it doesn't change nothing because they don't understand and nobody's telling them nobody's giving them advice nobody's telling them yo more like this more like that and it's interesting because all the information is here on youtube but everything is made for you to consume um, content that dumb you down more than content that teaches you something i have nothing against entertainment but from time to time if you decide that okay today i'm just gonna watch the stuff that i can learn something from learn about instagram like the, you you have people they have channels only about how to how to create your post on instagram how to do it differently people will tell you how they did it on your youtube channel how they do this style how they do that how they do their photos how they edit their photos all this is online every time i want to learn something i go to youtube and i, I watch those videos and that's how I, I just get new ideas but a lot of people instead of taking the time to learn all they do is they just want to go and jump into into the content and sadly they become part of the noise they become part of the noise because they don't take the time to work on their craft and to learn and to ask themselves am i doing the right thing am i doing it the right way am i doing the right song I know, I know some people, they do songs every week and the songs do nothing, but they keep doing songs because they believe that the quantity will do something. But the thing is this, 
if nobody's listening to you, you can put out 10,000 songs and you will generate 10,000 times zero, which is zero. Now, if you have 100 people listening to you, yeah, 1,000 songs multiplied by 100, that's 100,000. And but first you need the 100, first you need a thousand people and people don't have this recipe on how to create the crowd around you. And why would you create a crowd, a crowd around you? What is your, are, are you charismatic? People forgot about this world because we are just thousands and thousands of people trying. Probably if I go to, if I don't know how many people are live right now, but it's probably, I don't know, a hundred thousand, maybe a million people are live at the same time as me. I don't even know how those websites are doing this to be able to do all this. Yo, I have one, two, three screens showing me the same thing. One that is control screen that is showing me the same thing as you see. I have one that I'm seeing myself that is sending the information to the internet coming from a camera that is showing you that like, it's amazing to me to know that I can send you some HD, full HD content, but at the same time, there's another 1,000, 100,000 people who are doing the same thing. So it's amazing. But at the same time, should we all be doing this? Like, if we are all obsessed with creating content, nobody is, nobody is focusing on enjoying the content. Personally, I am on YouTube as a, a creator, but I'm also a consumer of YouTube. I, I watch 80% of YouTube more than everything else. And I love watching content because not only I get ideas from watching how the others do their content, and that's how I, I, I created my setup. Uh, my mom and my dad actually were, were congratulating, congratulating me uh, the other day for the quality of the thing. They were telling me I, was, I, was, I, had, a, I had an interview that played on, in, on TV in Congo, and, and my, my parents were telling me, yeah, well, that's... Where is it? It's a studio. So nice in my house. And they were like, wow, this, this is beautiful. It's really like you have your inner universe. And I was like, ah, thanks. You know? And again, like, I cannot tell somebody, I oh, know, don't express yourself. You all should express yourself if you want. But it opens a very interesting question. Because, you know, back on MySpace, Oh, back on Keisha.com, when I would post uh, something on Keisha.com, I would have a hundred comments because most people who would come to Keisha.com were consumers of content and they were just here to enjoy the content and I was here to provide the content fast forward to today when you are um, a creator a musician and a creator of of anything actually the people who are on Instagram watching you they are supposed to consume your content themselves have an account where they can also post content so they are also in competition with you because the only thing that is valuable now is time because everybody is competing for the same 24 hours of Hey, are you going to watch my content or are you going to watch the content of somebody else? Hey, can you watch my content? I'm sorry. I'm busy posting my content and I'm busy trying to have my content seen by other people. So the people who used to be our customers are now 
our competition. MJ Wimoto is here. He's, he makes music as well. He has a YouTube channel. Maybe he prefers creating his own content instead of watching mine. Maybe he prefers trying to have people go see his videos instead of them going to see my videos. Julie, our queen here, she has her Instagram and all her content. So if people go to my Instagram, they're not going to her Instagram. So if she has a choice and somebody only has the time to go see one photo, she'd rather people go see her photo because she's also a content creator. So all of us here, Elise boys, she has her content on her Instagram, playing bass guitar in the church. All this content is the content that she would love people to see and that's why she's sharing it. But when, when people go see her content, they're not going to see mine. You see what I mean? So all of us are in competition now. For what? For time. For and algorithms decide who's who they want to make popular. And on this next generation that is coming, the TikTok generation, it's even worse. It's even worse. Somebody does a, a you can you can listen, you can create an amazing dance choreography on a song. And you, somebody can just click on something and use the same audio that you use, create a video, and then it becomes popular from that person. She makes a million views and you don't. But you created the choreography. But you're still there waiting. And the other one becomes popular and now she makes the trends. And maybe she's not a great dancer, but she's gonna wait for you to do the next choreography because you're still trying. So you're gonna make another choreography and you're gonna be like, yo, this time it's me. I'm the original one. And that person has a million followers. So she's just waiting for you and other people to do and then they learn from what you do and boom, and they explode and they get a deal and they get money. Yo. <laughs> We are on our own as content creators. Can you imagine that? Somebody asked me yesterday, yeah, how you have 100,000, almost 200,000 subscribers on your channel. Why you only have five comments on your videos? I was like, it's not it's the algorithms. It's not me. And I don't mind because this is not my main business. But if it was my main business, I would be like, yo, what are we, what am I doing? You see what I mean? Like it's, it was so hard. Let's say this was the, the line, right? This was the line between, um, on that side, you had the ones who were trying to make it. And on that side, it was the one who signed. At that time, there was a lot of people here and a few of us here. But as we were here, it was just us and millions of fans. So you could sell 100,000 CDs and make a million. Now that everybody is here, so everybody can express themselves, but even the fans are here too. They're not here watching. They're all here with us everybody's a creator and we don't know what to do like because everybody is here trying to make it and everybody's on the same side and back in the days when you were here you were complaining that there was a wall here that was preventing you from signing and being on it on the other side and when you were here you were like yo let my friends come but now that we all sharing the space and, and there's no more wall, I feel like it's even harder for those 
And I'm lucky because I had the time to build my brand. But I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of people who who explode because they maybe because they are native to this this space and they, they were born in the internet, so they they understand what to do. But even though things are going so fast on the internet, like yeah, every every two weeks there's a new thing that everybody's talking about and look like what we were talking about last week everybody's starting to all the videos are milking the last of it but everybody's trying and looking for the next thing to talk about and i i think if you're not like me and me i'm a workaholic I love to be in front of these machines and work. Like when I'm not doing anything, I love to always be doing those things. But if you're not like me, it's a little overwhelming. And I would even say that it's, it's exhausting to say to yourself that if you want to exist, you have to post four TikToks every day. You have to post two free photos on Instagram and try to have ideas and you don't know what to do. So some people, I look at their Instagrams and I feel like they're posting the same photo with the same pose all the time. And it's not because they are bad. It's just because they don't know what to do. They're lost. They don't even know where to find inspiration. So they keep doing the same photo over and over again, thinking it's going to change something and it doesn't change nothing. Because once I've seen one photo and I see that every time I come to your profile, you're always doing the same pose and the same photo. Why would I come back? You're not surprising me. So they go somewhere else and the algorithms. Yeah, they're going to show you so many things that why would you stay here? You have the choice. You have too much choice. But nobody's telling them you should vary what you are showing. You should be a little more creative. You should do more of this. You should try these. Look at these poses from these people. Try to do something like this. Try to change a little bit. Try to etc. But the 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 fine job of being an A and R disappeared. So everybody's lost, and everybody's just lost trying to trying to serve a clientele of customers who are now becoming competition because everybody's competing on time it doesn't matter if you're a singer if you are an only fan model if you're an influencer if you are uh, in a church if you are a dancer if whatever you do you you, you do cakes you're a cook you're a chef you have a restaurant you have a you you jump out of planes everybody's competing for the same thing which is time. Time because everybody's gonna spend one hour on their phone, swiping up, double, double clicking to like, and then swiping up. And as they do it, you hope, first of all, that your content arrives somewhere and somebody clicks. And, and if they choose you, cool. But as they choose you, they're not choosing somebody else because there's too much. There's too many people to watch. There's too many people that look the same. And the horrible thing to me is that if I, for example, if I like 10 photos from my wife, the next day, if I go to the explore page of Instagram, it's going to show me 10 new girls that look like my wife. And what is interesting here is that how can you be unique even for the eyes of your clients, your customers, if once the platform know what you like, instead of showing you more of what you like, the platform is going to show you 10 other people that look like what you like. And if I go today and i like i go to julie's instagram and i like all her photos instagram gonna find me 20 girls that 
have the same profile. Instead of, instead of saying to themselves, yeah, let, let us show him more Julie. Hey Julie, make more content for your new customers. The platform's gonna be, oh, you like this? We got a lot, there you go. And as a customer, you cannot, uh, you cannot become a subscriber of somebody specific. And I was saying something to my wife today. I was on Instagram. And you know, me, when I go on Instagram, I just casually, without even really looking, I'm, I like a photo, I like, I like a photo, I, I what, uh, swipe a photo up, I like, swipe, like, swipe, swipe, and I don't like, 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 like. And I'm liking a photo from somebody thinking that I know the person or I follow the person, and I realize I'm not following the person. And I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on? And so today now, Instagram decides to show you even photos on your feed from people that you don't follow. They suggest to you on your feed because they don't care about your preference. The same thing as YouTube. You can follow me, be subscribed to me and say, hey, I only want to watch Club Shada. YouTube is going to show you everything that looks like Club Shada. So how, as a creator, can you create your clientele? How can you have your, your people that will follow you and build something with you? If all these people are incentivized to follow not only other people, but also create their own content. Because all they care about as platforms is the money they're gonna make from the ads. They don't care about you. You create, you build those platforms, you make them popular, but they are not your platforms. And this is why I'm doing what I do. This is why I release songs every Friday. This is why I do two shows on my YouTube channel called Club Shada every week. And this is why I do my NFTs. I got my Discord, all these things because I'm I know how to build a community. And the, the answer is this, as creators, if you feel that you are alone and you don't know what to do in the sea of content, every time you drop your, 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 your content is a drop in the sea, the only way to survive is actually to create a community community of people that will come back to you. Bon chose. Bon chose fai. Joel, Trisha, the people who come here every week. This is when you have people who come back every week. People who like every week, people who comment every week. That's when you know you are building a community and it's better and that's what what they are not telling nobody. Everybody think, oh, I, I want to have a hundred thousand followers, but actually it's better to have a thousand or even a hundred followers that are faithful and that come back. That's your community. Those people are the people that will save you. Those people are the people who will come here. And when they, when you say something interesting, they will come and they will spend their hard earned money on you. Those are the people that you want. You need like a hundred people who pledge to give you $10 per month. That's a thousand dollars. That's enough to pay your rent. That's enough for you to create music for them. Way more. And it's way more interesting to try to build those hundred people into 500 people so that you make 5,000 per month. And just with your 500 core fans, you will make more money than people who have 100,000 followers that are useless, that are just following, but that's it. Then they become ghost followers. They like from time to time, and sometimes they would love to love you, but the, the platforms are not even showing your post to them unless you pay. 
so it is a it's something that i i uh i've been thinking about for a long time uh and i've i've been asking myself the question for myself and i've been testing for a few years now how to how to survive in the dark how to survive in the multitude i believe that most of you if you are creators you should start asking yourself am i am i reading my data am i understanding my data what am i understanding from my data i love to show you this uh all the time and um I kept so when I'm seeing this I have to understand how to read it this is my Spotify for artists I have 240,000 people who listen to me um, worldwide last month and they streamed 800,000 times what is interesting is where are these people and where they are streaming for you have to understand all this how many females 53%, 43% male, 1% on non-binary, 3% not specified. Where? France, Portugal, you can see it here. France, the US, Portugal, the Netherlands, Canada, UK, Spain, all this information is very important. The top cities where people are, are listening to your music. Very interesting. Why Paris? Because that's where I was the most famous. Lisbon, number two, Amsterdam, etc. All this information is very interesting. And from song to song, you have to also know what we, why is something going on that came out in 2005, my most popular song because of TikTok. You have to understand how this happens. All these things, you have to look at them every day. And not only, instead of just focusing on the content, you really have to focus also on the data. Who's listening to your, your content, where, where you find them. So you know, for example, where you can perform and you can, you can, you, you are not shocked by the thing because a lot of people, they are kind of improvising and they just letting the algorithm take them somewhere. I keep telling you, you have to dance with the algorithms. You have to learn to speak their language you have to learn to use them and um, the, i was showing you my analytics for spotify but you have to understand I, I go to the same page for spotify for apple music for youtube for twitter and for instagram and TikTok every day it doesn't take a lot of time it takes you like 20 minutes but i do it every day to understand what's going on who's listening who's watching who's following it's important if not yeah, you're going to be just like the rest of the noise. And the sad part is that inside of the noise, there's a lot of people who have interesting things to say. There's a lot of people who are really talented, but they're, in the, they're just in the noise because they don't even know how to swim inside of with the rest of the fish. You have to learn to build your island and... Uh, and build your community so your island that's you really have to learn to build your community because i think i think the solution and the answer is the community once you build a community once you have people that come back every week for you whatever whether it is your song whether it is your show whether it is what your content that's when you win because even i remember like back in the days like watching porn was something that people were like we were ashamed of it like in, in the internet it was slow you had to go to the sex shop buy a tape or a dvd like it was and then you had to hide it and under your bed like today it's just like this as the same as the rest it's unlimited content whatever you into it's there and you can see it live you can see it pre-recorded you can like it's everywhere whatever you like 4k 6k 8k these japanese whatever bony latina whatever whatever you want to see is there and 
So if you if you're part of that business, it's the same thing for you. You're like, what am I creating? How can I create something? You know, you, you want to be in a church business? It's the same thing. Sorry to go from this to that, but hey, listen, we all sinners. If you're in a church business and you are trying to do content for the people, it's going to be the same thing. It's going to be the same thing. You're going to be there trying to trying to exist in a world where ev everybody is a pastor. Everybody and their mama is a pastor. Yo, the, the, we we had a guy who used to work in our house. He was a domestic. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know how to say in English. He used he became a pastor as well. Anybody who can find 10, 10 people who come to listen to them, I'm a pastor. And they make money because it's the same. Like, And imagine all these people, they can come online and they start talking. I know a lot of them, they do it live. What I'm doing right now, they do the same, but they talk about religion. And people come watch and, they, and then they amass. But there's so much, so many people, so many scammers as well that the only way again to exist in the space and build something is to build a community like we are doing here to build a community and to protect it so when that person asked me yeah you have all these followers why you don't have likes and stuff i was like because i like it like this i had a conversation just Last week with a friend, he was like, yo, you know, you have to take Club Shadow to the next level. You need to have more people watching. You know, this show could be this, this show could be that. Uh, like, a lot of people watch this show and they don't they don't comment. They don't come to the chat. They just watch after. You know, like usually at the end of the show, we have like 200, 300 views. The next seven, 1,000 views are people who watch they don't leave comments they just watch and then they go and then they make comments like yo you know keisha's show is cool but you know he should talk to a tv he should talk to this he should talk to that and i'm like why are all these people interested in what i do they don't even know why i do it i'm building my community and i'm taking all my time to build it because i want to build a solid community and yeah but you know you could go to the next level it's time to take this like, who told you that I needed to take it to the next level? Um, I like the organic growth. Yeah, but you know, and it's the sponsors who told you I need sponsors. I sponsor my fucking self. But a lot of these people, they don't understand the community building. They just see something that has... Uh, uh, some something going on something interesting they see how i'm i'm great at interviewing people how i'm great i'm, I'm at storytelling etc and straight away they want to take it to the next level now i it's time it has to go like up 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 and i'm like no it can it's been going up so, now nah, but you know you're gonna miss the I said, urgency people and urgency is a problem it's not about urgency it's about building a community and building that community will change everything. It will change everything. You will realize that you don't need to post 10 times a day when you have the community, when you post it here. And this is what makes a difference. And this is why uh, we ask you to like the lives. This is why we ask you to go to the channel after the live and just leave a like and maybe say, yeah great show or go to the show of, of of last week you just go to the video and you just you just type great another great show and you put a like this is important because the algorithms are like oh okay cool and this is what creates something and then it shows it to people who look like you and as as creators since all of you are creators as well you have to just look at what i'm doing and how i'm doing it patiently and steadily like uh what was her name her name was tatiana i think like she said you are consistent on the youtube streets yeah consistency is how you create the consistency is how you create 
your community. And this is how I believe that. I believe this is how you, in a world where anybody can do the same thing as you and copy you, the community will make the difference, I believe. And I, I believe, I wouldn't say I cracked the code, but I believe this is the this is the, the solution that I've been thinking about and and wanting to share for a long time when it comes to uh, the revolution of, of, of content creation. Give me some unicorns in the chat if you enjoy me talking for one hour straight nonstop. <laughs> What is mean an hour and 46? Yo, time for me to go to sleep. Let me see your comments. Uh, yeah, put some mini coins in the chat if you enjoyed uh, this. And let me reply to most of your comments. What up, Djibril? Uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, the algorithm cannot distinguish quality from crap. Yes and no. I think the algorithms, I read something about somebody who was working for Spotify and working for the algorithms. Actually, the algorithms can, they cannot uh, distinguish, but they know exactly what is a snare, what is a kick, where they are. And if they take a, when they, they do a waveform, if they take a, the 100 songs that really are working on the platform, they will see that the waveform are more or less the same. The algorithms can detect the key of the song, the chords, and they know where the transients of the kick and the snares are. And just from that, the algorithms can know if the song you're doing is the same BPM and the same waveform more or less as the songs that are working. So if you wanna hack the algorithms, that's what you do. You look exactly on the Spotify top 100 list, exactly how are the songs, where are the kicks and snare, and you just do a clone of that with different lyrics and this more or less the same melody, but different. And you just put it there and then the algorithm will play it along with the rest of the, the, the song. So it's very interesting when you start to study how they make the algorithms because a lot of people they don't take the time to study to go to the spotify injury in engineering engineering blog and and see what they say of how they work because those people are sharing their their different things and and um, and then you discover so many interesting things and and you also listen to to the you go to the Spotify for artists blog. They also give you so many insight that is interesting. Uh, there's so much to read. There's a lot of YouTube channels as well that explain to you like the algorithms and, and what works, the strategies that the different strategies that you can try, etc., etc. As a content creator, all these things are free on YouTube, but most people are busy spending their days and nights with Will, Jada, Ember, Johnny, DL, Monique, etc., etc. So the competition is, I wouldn't say it's fierce. You know, Trisha, the com competition was fierce when it was just 10 of us. Because the 10 of us, most of the, mo like you would, you, ha you, ha you would have two free like me who didn't care about what the others were doing. And we're just happy for everybody. But then you would have always two free in there that would be like, oh, I want to be alone here. I don't want 10 people. But bro, there's like 50 clubs. It's okay. We can do one. Like there's enough club for all of us. The whole, the whole nah, I just want me. Some people like that. Now, like everybody's flushed by the water and we all feel like fishes in, in an endless ocean of content. Um, I wouldn't say that the competition is fierce. I would say, I would say that every every content you put is a drop in the ocean, and it's. I, I've said it before. Every time you you want to see if I'm right about what I'm saying, just ask anybody. Uh, when is what is the photo that you saw Monday? The first photo you saw Monday when you woke up. 
So today is Wednesday. Tell me what photo you ask anybody. Hey, what is the first photo that you saw Monday on your phone, on Instagram, when you woke up? People will not remember just because we see so many photos every day that none of them mark us because it's like a never ending well of photos, 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 whatever you like, photos, 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 photos. And because everybody understand that the only way to exist is to continue posting, because if you stop posting, the algorithm, oh, he's not posting anymore, like, replace him with somebody else. So everybody is scared of stopping and people burn out. So yeah, the competition is as drowning in the water of content as us. That's true, but we choose what we want to do with our content and learn, earn a lot of money quickly or build a career. It takes more time, but it's clever. Yeah, for those who are, if you know how to cleverly do your content and monetize your community, yeah, it's amazing. But a lot of people, they have no clue. They're in the dark. I think nowadays many people are chasing the fame because of what they think being a celebrity is. Yeah, that's true. There's micro celebrities, there's micro influencers now, um, and everybody's just trying to exist in the eyes of strangers, which to me is very interesting because the only two people I ever wanted to impress or to tell me they were proud of me are my mother and my father. Uh, and the only two people I wanted to impress and be the example of are my two kids. Everybody else, I don't care what they think. I, they, yeah, I mean, you like, cool. You don't like what you're doing here. That's the only way I see things. But most people today, yeah, they will take, they will care more about how their followers uh, look at them rather than their own husband or boyfriends or girlfriends. Like if the whole internet is telling you that you are ugly, you will care more about all these strangers than your own boyfriend who's telling you that you're the most beautiful thing he he's has ever seen. You will focus on all these strangers. Um, and you you see it uh, with most people uh, online in their, in all the things that they're fighting for. Everybody's fighting for opinions about people they don't know with people that they don't know. I'd, I'd lo I love having a great conversation with MJ, with with you guys. I love having a great conversation with Body, a debate. I love disagreeing with Body about something and really talking about it. Or I see me having a conversation with Asimi about, or with Sumi about things we disagree on politically or whatever. And just each exchanging information. But strangers? Like... Yeah, sometimes, you know, that's how you meet interesting people. And sometimes you're going to have, yeah, you're going to put a comment on the video. You're going to put your opinion. Somebody's going to comment on your opinion. It's cool. Uh, but then some people become aggressive. Some people start being angry. Some people want to insult you just because they disagree with you. And me, I'm like, well, who are you, strangers? What do you want? Like, what's your problem? Like, who asked you to comment on my comment? If it's to, if you did, like, can't you disagree with and chill? No, like, and people are invested in things. Like sometimes you're like, all right, okay. So yeah, people are chasing. Uh, I think people don't even know why they're here on this earth and they are looking for reasons to be here uh in all the wrong places 
and the internet is an amazing place to to find all these all these mobs of people that you can just mold into becoming robots and then tell them have them say whatever you want them to say and go fight with the rest of the world and try to turn everybody into whatever thing they believe it's it's very interesting it's very powerful and some the the, the people who are manipulators oh listen the internet is the best tool ever i think learning is a constant never lose the hunger to learn yes uh, and i would add and and sometimes also take the time to stop everything including learning just chill watch something that doesn't teach you nothing it is just pure entertainment it's important to to keep a balance getting distracted is easier than staying focused oh yes oh yes that's that's true worldwide it's a matter of can I do something and should I just go ahead and do it I think people don't ask themselves the question they just start here they start at go ahead and do it <laughs> they look at their t-shirt the t-shirt says just do it <laughs> yeah let's go am I thank you C'est fatigant. I know a dance instructor in France that copyrights her choreographies. Yeah, that was interesting. I don't even know if you can really copyright the choreographies. Um, because of Fortnite, that's when the, 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 the issue started. And it was hard to... I think it's hard to... To copyright movement and uh, I'm not, I mean I didn't read about that but I'm not sure that you really can copyright movements and unless you can really prove that you invented them because as soon as you use uh, any move that come from Africa or from a video that that was on TikTok 10 years ago etc like you have to really prove that you invented that move so some people are really the inventors of some moves, etc. But a choreography, it's. But maybe maybe the laws moved on that. I, I didn't. Uh... I have to follow up on that. I didn't really teach myself anything on that. Exactly. Exactly. Focus, 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 and smart goals. Yep. And I would even say not start expanding before mastering that specific place of content. That's true. All of them, they're there. It's crazy. Twitter is crazy. Watching porn, the internet was slow. Only <laughs> it was it was a nightmare. With like one image would take you so much time, <laughs> so you had to choose the right image because the internet was on 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 cards. So like you only had like twenty minutes of internet, and the image would take I don't know five three minutes four minutes to load. So you you have to make sure you have the right image because if not. It's over and you could not save it in your drive. We didn't have space in the drives. Ah là là. Sans transition, ma chère. On est là, on est ensemble. The first, ah, oh, now we go. The first podcast I ever bought was a Sakis musical video. I remember how Kabula was hiding from my parents this evening. Sakis was not born. I had an ex that was dancing for seconds, actually. <laughs> well, it was, it's true that it was, she had a big ass. Anyway. Hello, Christine. Yep. C'est pas le, un, 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 
un proverbe africain qui dit « Si tu ne connais pas ta destination, le sens du vent ne te sert à rien. » Something like that. Damn, I asked about the unicorns a long time ago. And I'm only arriving here. Oh, Nathaniel. You have to come to Club Shada and, and talk with us about the things you do and the inspiration that you've been putting on Twitter. Matt Music, what up, my boy? When is the song coming up? That was me just asking. <sighs> anyway, you can put DJs in the same box. Listen, I believe that I'm going to do a whole... I mean, we talk about this with Buddy. I think we I did a show with Buddy Sadva on his channel when we talk about this. But yeah, for DJs... It's a nightmare. Listen, anybody today can be a DJ. Anybody. It's so easy, especially now that you have programs like... Somebody asked me one day to create a... Somebody asked me to create a whole, a whole a set, a video set for a festival. And I did it. And it was the easiest thing ever. And yeah, I just took tractor, put on the sync master, did a, a playlist. And my, my thing, I, I did a few mistakes with the, 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 the effects and stuff. But my thing was amazing. I think I'm going to play it on Buddy's channel. And it's so easy, you know, when you have a, something like this, you can do anything easy. With that thing. So yeah, it's, um, it's complicated, but it's, it's actually the same thing for the DJs. And uh, I, 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 that's why I wanted to have somebody like DJ BZ Brown come and have a conversation about DJing, but we have them. Uh, I might also call body to have it. Uh, it is complicated when you are a DJ, when it used to be, it's not really the technology, but the technology does this. Because if you're a good selector, you're a good selector. But back in the days, it was hard to be able to not only have crates of of coca-cola with your vinyls inside and then learn how to master the techniques of mixing and 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 going from one track to another fading scratching etc uh so you had a few a select few and you had like five to ten good djs and they would be able to 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 work in all the different clubs but with technology yeah listen I have tractor on my iPad and just put some tracks and then they will sync automatically. The, the, the program will choose tracks even for me uh, that are on the same key and they will stream them directly from Spotify or Beatport. And I can even do auto sync and it all just go by itself. So it became so easy And anybody can be, yeah, you know, you can play some good Afro house, you're a DJ. And when the DJs come to me, I, so I had those conversations with Buddy. The DJ comes to me and say, ah, I saw these fake DJs, their fault. And I tell them the same thing. I say, no, you have to work on your brand. You have to work on your community. You have to work on becoming somebody that people... If they have the choice between 100 people, they will go to you. This is what you have to do. This is why the brand is important. Because calling yourself DJ anything, everybody can do it. But yeah, that would be a good, a good show about DJing. <sighs> Listen, you have to protect yourself. That's your responsibility. What I don't like is people who only come on your page to lurk. They never like or comment 
or save any of your posts what's the point lurking i should do that i'm gonna start doing this because you don't like things let me see if you like my last my last posts because i like all your posts i don't know if you like my posts let me see club shot oh okay i lied the first thing it shows me is your like here it says mistrish so i stand corrected you you you're one of the good ones but the lurkers you have to understand them maybe they're married maybe they have a girlfriend and they just hear like mm, mistrish mm. and yeah they cannot put a like because maybe their wife is following you just to make sure you know so yeah what am i gonna do it's c'est compliqué uh, and listen and you know it's something that is very interesting we should do a whole show about haters because the haters the people that talk about you they need to eat they need ingredients they need to have something to talk about so they come to your page <laughs> yay they come to your page and they lurk because they want to have something bad to say about you you know they need to come watch to have something to say so consider them part of your community the silent ones listen the number of people who talk about this show in the artistic world you have no idea a lot of artists in the zook kizomba hip-hop r&b world in so many countries they talk about this show and they hear they watch the show but they don't say nothing they don't leave a comment nothing but whenever i talk to some friends they say ah oh, such and such told me that yeah yeah so they saw the show about this and this and they yeah it was cool and i was like yeah why did they don't leave a comment eh. okay the a lot of people they don't want to leave comments you know why because when they want to when they're going to copy you and they're going to do a xxx club and something that strangely is them talking about different subjects and being exactly the same format as club shada uh when you say are you copying keisha's show they can say keisha has a show you see what i mean so they pretend but they cannot put a like because they need to copy in silence uh but the fun part is we had 211 episodes 200 211 episodes after 10 episodes they're usually done they're like damn this is a lot of work yeah it's a lot of work so yeah, what are we gonna do uh you could you could we all have collections of your videos do I have my collection? <laughs> I don't know. I changed computers. So maybe I wiped my drive. But I, I, who, who cares? I don't watch them. I watch them for professional. I, I used to watch them for professional purpose. To give her advices. But. Well, listen. At, at a point, every time I do a song, she would send me a video. But I, so. I had them. Because they were there. But yeah those were other times it's pink thank you haters are still consumers that's going to be the, the title of my my video about haters remind me that when i do that live about the haters <laughs> so invite them in open arms uh judy has stories for days and, and uh, yeah <laughs> 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 
It's not my fault. <laughs> I never asked for anything. Julie tell them the truth. I never asked for anything. One day I was there, some girl arrived from nowhere and she's telling me, yo, I did this video on your music. Oh, your music inspired me so much. Boom. Oh, your last video made me wet. Boom. But I was like, oh, okay, let me store them with the rest. Like, but that was a long time ago. That was like 10 years ago. I don't know. I, 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 listen, I, actually, I will celebrate next next episode probably because it's been 10 years now that I live in Portugal. So that was before me moving in Portugal. So probably 11, 12 years ago. So I didn't ask for nothing. I'm innocent. So just what Anyway. Anyway. Give me some unicorns in the chat if you enjoy that show. Some 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 rainbows and some uh, some hearts. I'm about to check out and I'm going to leave you guys with a song. Um, what am I going to play for you? I'm going to play you my latest song with Makita called You Break Everything in My System. Yeah, I'm going to play that. You Break Everything in My System, Keisha and Makita. And uh, yeah, listen, uh, I think it's, I'll, I don't know what we're going to talk about Sunday, but uh, I'm sure I'll find something. I have a list of subjects that is infinite. And sometimes when we freestyle, we just come in. It's even more funny. Anyway, uh, always happy to spend some time with you guys. The chat was lit tonight. There was a lot of people we had. Yeah, a good 100 people. Cool. Uh, and I will see you when I see you. All right. This show is... Look at this guy not being a professional. Thanks to our stream royalty, Emmanuel Etienne. This show is brought to you by Shadow Word, the gods of good fortune. And uh, thank you to all the new subscribers. And I'm leaving you with You Break Everything in My System, Keisha and Makita. Don't forget that Friday we got a new song. It's going to be again Keisha, Jassy and Makita in a song called I forgot. We'll see Friday. Peace. Every day for you, they came.